child goes to school every day, and when she reads about her history, she's not reading about her forefather. She's reading about George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. She's reading about Thomas Jefferson. You know. And she's reading about Andrew Jackson. Great men to be Caucasian men. That's what she sees. We allow them to keep on teaching our kids. You gotta teach your kid, but you gotta be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's why there has to be a paradigm shift within our mind. And a paradigm shift comes to repentance. And there has to be a spiritual revolution, a revolution within the minds of our people. There has never been a spiritual revolution. I'm talking about spiritual revolution and changing the mind. We have yet to change our minds as the people. Right, right. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. As the woman will only follow, like I said, the woman will follow the man. Yeah. But you gotta be the example of the house. Think about it, what are you following right now? You gotta ask yourself, are you following the correct thing? So she's following what you follow. Right. And that's what the world portrays. So the world teaches that, so she's only following, she's only Take it in only what you give her. So you have to take that position as the head of the household. So you got to take the steps and give her time too. It's going to take time. Don't think that she's going to convert right away for all those years. Now, is your daughter homeschool or does she go to the public school system? Public school. Does your wife work? Yeah. Okay. And sometimes you got to make sacrifices too. Like me, my wife stays at home. She homeschools all my daughters for a reason. So I'm not going to allow the world to take my daughter's mind. It's my job as a father, not only to protect and provide, but to protect and provide, protect my wife as well as my children's mind. Right. So that's why I said, I took the stance. I said, you know what? I don't want my wife working out there. If she does decide to get a job, if she needs to get a job, she can get a job working from home. But she can still do a homeschooling kid because I want my wife to instill my values into my children. Right. And my values, the Bible values. Right. So, that's right. Right. So that's the stance that we as men could think the school system meant to destroy our children. And no matter how many good values, no matter how many times you pray with your child, the school will corrupt them. I'm right. telling you right. How do I know? Because I was a teacher. And I see through peer pressure, after a while, that water dripping on the wood will weaken it after time, a period of time. It will weaken their mental psyche and it will corrupt them eventually. I gotta say that the school system is kind of Say it again. I said the school system here messed me up. So, so like, like, the question is, the brother, all the good teachers, the brothers brought up the scriptures. What is the next steps you got to take? I got to study, like, learn more about myself and mm -hmm. my, my my history. What is your history? What about yourself? Because I was I was taught that the way I was raised was that we come to this country. My, my, some of my family told me that I'm not, I'm not 110 black. I used to always tell my aunt. Because they don't know. Because they don't know. They don't know. None of us know. Right. And then, um, just I was always, and then I was in the hustle and thing and all that. So, mm -hmm. so in my mind, like, it was just like, you know, coming from where, you just get, try to get money. Mm -hmm. That's it. You go to home, you don't get locked up, you come back down, you home, and that's it. That's yeah. exactly the way Try to get money, and then the only, exactly. the main yeah. thing is just for us, is, like, it's just money. Yeah. So, and, and look at it. What is that love each other, man. And what does that mentality got us? Nowhere. Think about it. We're the most, we talk about money the most out of all races yeah. of people. Yeah. Even billionaires don't talk about money the way black people talk about it. Right. How do we talk about money more than anybody but we're the most broke, we're the brokest people out of all cultures? We don't have our own shopping malls. We don't have our own shop rights, our own farms, our own reservoirs. We have none of that, but we talk about money more than anybody. Right. Because it's not about money. At the end of the day, it comes to family values, it comes to love for God and love for your nation. That's the end of the day. That's what life is about. Life is not about the materialistic possessions that they brainwash us to think it is. Right. Life is not about that. Hold that real quick. Give me um, Luke chapter 12 verse 15. Luke 12 verse 15. Luke 12 verse 15. Read. The book of Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Uh -huh. you know. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. So the Bible Christ taught us many different lessons. One lesson he taught us is take heed and beware of covetousness. All throughout our life is ran by covetousness. In the hip hop industry, they say get money. Right. 50 cents, get rich or do what? 
die trying. Right. So this is the message that they keep on pushing, brainwashing our people. It's not about get a job and to be able to provide and raise your family. It's get rich, go to the strip club, you have Mayweather, you have um, Drake. Mm -hmm. These are the role models that they're pushing and our children are looking for it, looking at those role models and they're following the same pattern. So the Bible says to do what? Take heed and beware of covetousness. Covetousness is a desire, something that you can't obtain. People will go and sell drugs. They will sell traffic. Someone, a beautiful black woman, set your friends up, traffic her, like you see in the movie Rambo. We have her best friend. You ever seen the movie Rambo? Well, there's one scene in Rambo with Sylvester Stallone. He had his niece, went to Mexico, and her friend sold out to the cartels to be sex trafficked just for money. Because beware of covetousness. How many people you think we know, or brothers that you don't even know, that you think they're your friend, or men that you think they're your friend, but next thing you know, not knowing that they're setting you up. They say, yo, she's gonna be in this location. Hey, she just got to work, she just got off of work. Go to the shopping mall, she's right there. Hey, she unlocked the door, so don't worry about it. I'll put a track on her. The Bible says to take heed, tea, take heed of consciousness. Consciousness is a lust of money, and many different things. You know, living a lifestyle, selling drugs, selling your body, consciousness, read. Take heed and beware of covetousness. Read. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. The Bible says, think about it. A man's life does not consist of what? The abundance and of. The abundance of the what? Of the things which he possesses. Life is not about Louis Vuitton. Not, life is not about, yo, I got the new Jordans. Right. It's not about the Gucci, the Prada. It's not about the, the, the Venti. Right. right. The, it's not, what do you say? It's not about the pride of life. Right. Black people, we walk around, or black women too, look at my hair. Black women, more, majority of the time, what do they spend their money on? The Materialistic nails, possessions. Their the hair, their nails, their eyelash, yep. their makeup, vanity, consciousness. What are they trying to try to attract a man for what? Money, substance. How can I trap up, or how can I fish the biggest bidder, bigger, bitter? But where did they get that from? The world. It's the world that's pushing. That's why there has to be a paradigm shift within our mind. And a paradigm shift comes to repentance. There has to be a spiritual revolutionary revolution within the minds of our people. There has never been a spiritual revolution. I'm talking about spiritual revolution and changing the minds. We have yet to change our minds as the people. We have yet to refrain our thoughts. The Bible says life is not about the things that you possess, the house that you possess, the biggest houses. We aim to live like the Jones. That's why they push Atlanta housewives. Basketball wives, why they keep on pushing? So that you can keep America's pockets rich. Right. And it doesn't go back and feed your own nature. Rather right. say, you know, let me get a regular house. Normal house, four bedroom. It doesn't have to be the most glamorous, the biggest window. Doesn't have to be 50, 50, um, 50 rooms, like 50 cent. 50 cent for the house. They said on cribs. Mike Tyson's home, and he says, I don't even go down the the hallway. Damn. He don't even go to the bathroom. Now listen. He doesn't use all the bathrooms. What is it for? It's but it's they're, they're pushing a life that doesn't have any fruit. Right. A life that doesn't benefit us. It's a materialistic lifestyle. Read. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Read. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, Read. The ground of a certain rich man. Now let's go down all the way to the bottom. Uh, verse 21. Read verse 20. Read. Verse 20. Check but, but God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Uh -huh. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? God could kill you at any moment. So think about it. You worked your whole life to get the Pradas, the Gucci, to get the, the BMW. You walk around to be the freshest person walking around all of Patterson. The hottest glasses, the, every, the, you're the freshest person. Everybody gives you a problem. Yo, you dress well, you smell good. You dress good, yo, I like your house, your car, and all of that. But at any time, God can do what? Come on. Thy soul shall be required of thee. God can kill you at any moment, any time. You can walk down a block. I mean, you killed yourself, you slaved yourself. Slaving, working 15 hours a day when you didn't have to work that. The Bible talks about food, raiment, and clothes. That's the basic necessities we have. That's the only thing we need. But nowadays, we want to do extra. We want to go beyond to get the materialistic and that yeah. you don't even need. You want to get the iPhone 15 for what? The iPhone 7 is the same thing as the iPhone 15. Right. You want to get the iPad 10. Why do you need it for? What is the necessity of that? What, what, 
ask yourself a question at the end of the day. Do you really need the things that they're pushing on TV? Because every year, think about it, before we have phones, do we need phones? No, we didn't. Before we have uh, text messages, do we need do we text message? No. I feel like it messed up our form of communication. It did. They it's called and they spend billions of dollars on advertisement. Why? They're trying to push a new idea in you. Right. And you accept it like diamonds. Diamonds. Diamonds are forever by the but the Bears family. You know we never use diamonds for marriage when it came to engagement. Diamonds first of all when it comes to rings, that's pagan in general. When it comes to rings. But diamond was never a form of marriage proposal. The, the Bears pushed that. They put you on celebrities. They said, listen, I want you to put you to Hollywood. I want you to make this important. Right. They create things that does, it's not really real. Oh, okay. But then imagine they, they're able to influence your thoughts, advertise you, and then manipulate you. Can I feel yeah, go ahead. Because I have a couple of female friends that, um, that got a proposal. Mm -hmm. And they said they picked out their own rings because the man wouldn't pick the right one. Say that again? They, they picked out their own engagement rings because the man did not pick the right one. For well, we never did engagement rings. No, no, I'm saying, uh, yeah. I, I think that. But yeah, exactly. The man didn't pick out, you see? Because they feed it into that materialistic lifestyle. Right. right. Yeah. So life is not about that. Life at the end of the day, brother, goes back to your wife, God first, your nation, your wife, and your children. Right. So you got to re-examine, give me that in Ephesians 4 verse 23. You got to re-examine re yourself, like I said, when it comes to your walk of life. What is it that you're doing? It's the things that... Everybody, but everybody, because I asked my man, we think we all going to change. Because everybody that who I came up with, we all the same. Like, same mentality. We all the same. Yep. We all messed up. We all messed up. All of us. Mm -hmm. Even though we try to do the right thing, somebody right whispered in your ear. Yo, yo, yo. yo. So what is your defense? The problem is you have no defense. Yes, yeah. yeah. right. the, the, the defense you have is not a really defense. You think it's a defense, but the world it camps it camps your whole thought process. Yep. Your whole thought process is based upon the media, TV, the school system, and guess who controls that? The brother was going over earlier, the enemies, the people that enslaved us controlled your thought process. Your nationality, they gave you your nationality. You were created in this country. Think about it, your, your very, your last name, your first name, your nationality, Everything about you has been controlled by America. Even your culture, we call it hip-hop culture. What kind of culture is that? Your history, your education, your values. Entertainment. Entertainment, go on. The book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse 23. Right. Yeah. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So the question now, how do you renew yourself? It says be renewed in the what? In the spirit of your mind. You have to renew yourself in the spirit of your mind. So the white man captured your mind. Now it's time to recapture your mind and put it towards God. Your thoughts, you have your thoughts has to be in acclimation with God's thoughts. Right. It has to be. You have to retrain your way of thinking. I don't care how old you are, how old any of us think. Guess what? When you come to the Bible, why do you think Christ says, except a man be born again, you can't see the kingdom of God? Why is it born again? Born in the captivity that you, you were raised in. You gotta be taught all over again from the time that you were born. You was instilled America's values, their principles. Their lifestyle. Right. You were taught about sex. Do what? How were you taught about sex? How were you taught about relationship? TV, porn. At a young age, hip hop, music. Remember, was, who said a game? Said Uncle Luke told me how told me how to get my girl how to go down. Game said that in one of his lyrics. Uncle Luke told me how to get a girl to go down on me. Who taught him that? Hip hop. The game taught you. That's what the Bible says to do what? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit. There's a spirit in your mind. The white man's changed and altered our spirit. Think about it. He controls the music industry. His spirit ain't right. You see what they're doing in Israel today with the Palestinians? But you, these are the people that claim to be the children of God. The Jews got the whole, the, church, the holy people. Bring it out. These, these, are, these are guys that own the record labels. Record labels. Right. These are the executives in Hollywood. These are your um, your producers in Hollywood. They control the script. They control the TV shows that you watch. Right. They control the music that you listen to. They control the news that they feed us with. They control the McGraw curriculum, school curriculum. Right. When you go, when your child goes to school every day, and when she reads about her history, she's not reading about her forefather. She's reading about George Washington. Abraham Lincoln, she's reading about Thomas Jefferson, Bring it out. and she's reading about Andrew Jackson. 
And if you look at uh, Mount P uh, Plymouth Mountain, what is Mount it? Rushmore. Mount Rushmore, and she said the founding forefathers, great men to be Caucasian men. That's what she sees. And we allow them to keep on teaching our kids. You gotta teach your kid, but you gotta be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm. Give me that Joe, Joe, Joe to the eight percent. Bring it up. So you gotta retrain yourself. You gotta retrain yourself. What's your name? Chardé. That's not your name, Chardé. <laughs> That's not your real name. That's a black name. <laughs> what's your name? Andrew. 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 Yeah. So Chardé, Andrew. How you doing, brother? What's your name? Isaac. Isaac. Oh, that's a biblical name. <laughs> you all right? Huh? Chardé, you ain't. So you ain't in spirit right now, Sade. That's a Negro name, Sade. What well, they call Autumn? They call Star? <laughs> Mercedes? Oh, shit. Nigerian singer. Huh? It's okay, dude. It's okay. I know, I know. I'm actually, I'm gonna play with you. Joe chapter 8, verse 8. The book of Job, chapter 8, and verse 8. Look it up! For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. The Job said, I inquire. You know what color Job was, according to the Bible? He's black? What do you say? What do you say? Job 30 verse 30. Do you know that for certainty? Because in the church where they teach us the Christ they, of life. They told us Christ was uh, a white man. White man but, yeah. I, but according to the Bible. He's, he's a black man. Exactly. That's why you got to renew yourself in the spirit of the Bible. Exactly. <laughs> but, they, but they teach us how to hate each other. Hate ourselves. By the images that they push in the church, in the media, you go to Pastor Christ. And you notice that in Israel United Christ, for example, we have something called Matthews 1, 2, 3. When we produce biblical movies of the correct portrayal of our ancestors, what they look like. According to the Bible, we had a, uh, a movie called Joseph Dream. You know the devil white man, what he did? He just made a movie, the same movie, exactly the same. Joseph Dream. Nothing different from how he made it. This is a spiritual warfare. Warfare for what? For the minds of our people. Right. We're war for the souls of our people. Many of our people, many of our people are lost to the white man. Right. They're talking about, oh, you sold your soul to the devil. No, the devil got everybody here. Right. Every single one of you worshiping Satan. How do we know? By you go, when you pledge allegiance to that flag, you worship the devil. When you celebrate Christmas, you worship Satan. Right. When you celebrate your birthdays, you worship, worship the Satan. Right. Everything that you learned in America, you've been learned, taught how to worship in a white man, which is the devil the Bible speaks of. That's right. You don't worship God. You worship the white man. And that's facts. When you pray to you pray at night, you don't pray to God. You know I know? Because God says he hears not sinners. So the way you dress, who taught you how to dress? What society that trained you? The fashion week? Who taught you how to speak? Who taught you how to eat the food? What's acceptable and what's not acceptable? Who taught you what traditions to keep? That's your God that you serve. Yes, yes, but do we follow that? No, no we don't. Half the stuff that was in the What's that? And, and you don't know. We're not going to hold you accountable. Yeah. This is the time to know. Job 30, verse 30. Book of Job, chapter 30, and verse 30. Uh -huh. Look it up. My skin is black upon me. It's been there the whole time. Job said, My skin is black. How many times you read the Bible when we go to church and they never brought this up? You know how many souls that you could have changed? How many minds that you could have kept from going selling drugs, drunk to the street? How many kids you could have kept from prison? Right. How many doors you could have kept from prostitute or self? Right. How many lives you could have sold just by that alone? The confidence that you could have raised within our children, within our youth? The kids want to go on a stuff on rock killing each other, hating one another. That self-hatred that's fed or bred within us from a youth. Because when you look on TV, you see the image of beauty. You see Becky, beautiful, blonde hair, blue eyes. You see Brad Pitt, beautiful. But when you look at yourself as a young child, you see black and say, I hate that nigga. I hate the person that I look in the mirror at because why? The image that they showed, they taught us how to hate each other, hate ourselves. I was watching an anime the other day. It has a lot of biblical uh, references in it. And in the anime, it's new on Netflix. It's a Japanese one. And it showed how the white man came and infiltrated Japan, right? And when he came to Japan, Japan said, we don't want the white people in this country. And then the white man, he came in this one scene, it's heavy. Throughout the one scene, he, say, he says, he said, listen, you thought you could keep us out of here, this country? He said, we're come to influence your kids. We're coming to bring our, bring our music here, influence your thought process, and we come to have you guys hate yourself, hate your very image of yourself. I said, damn, that was an anime. He says, we come to show you how to hate yourself and love us, who, who you perceive at one point in time to be ugly. He actually said it in an anime. He says, we came to show you how to love us, whom which you looked and despised as being ugly. 
That's the manipulation. That's the power that they have over media. It's called witchcraft, wizardry. This white man, this devil, the Bible speaks of Esau, he practiced witchcraft. This is sorcery being practiced. TV, television, they're telling you their vision. Hollywood, Hollywood. It's all witchcraft and sorcery, the cell phone. Witchcraft, sorcery, sorcery, magic. magic. You ever see the movie Black Adam? I have You see Black Adam? Remember the scene when he came on the scene, when he came, uh, when he came touched down? And he looked at the TV, what did he say about the TV? He says, what is, yeah, he's in the room. What did he say about the TV? What is his magic? Peep it, go back and watch it. He says, what is his magic? And, a, and a, he came down, he says, my magic is stronger than your magic. Oh, yeah, it's because it's magic. All you see is sorcery, witchcraft, right before your eyes. And you don't even look at it that way because they, they're able to manipulate you. Look at them as the, the angel, what the scripture says in uh, 1 Corinthians. The um, light. The, the angel that bears light. You look at him as the angel of God. That's why. And we worship them. Read, read on. Job chapter 8, verse 8. Book of Job chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh -huh. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. So and Job, a black man. Job understood what would happen to our people. That's why he's telling us in the last days to inquire, to ask. We don't ask questions. We just watch and we listen. Nobody questions the pastor. Pastor, hey, how you doing, my brothers? Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. Nobody goes to church. Nobody challenges the pastor. Because I read in the Bible, Christ has one here like you do. Right. The people on the side, blacks, Latinos, native Americans, but it is right to the Nobody would question a pastor. Nobody would question a politician. Nobody would question the school teachers. We were taught to be quiet and to be good slaves. Don't question anything. Because in slavery, if you question or you know how to read or write, they'll kill you. Don't look up at me. Don't question me, boy. So they still got fear into us not to look, not to search, but to receive or accept anything they told me. Can they call you African American, right? What do they call you? What's your nationality call you? Huh? Jamaican. They call you Jamaican? What do they call you? Dominican. They call you Dominican. Dumb dog. That's what they call you. Dominican. Yeah. What do they call you? What, what do they call you? Dominican. They call you Dominican means dumb dog. What do they call you? Dominican. Dominican. Dumb dog. That's what they call you. That's what like, the, the conquistadors of Spaniards came over this world. They said you're dumb dogs of God. But God says you're Simeon. These are our biblical nationalities. This is the heritage that we had prior to the white man coming over here, colonizing us, enslaving us, and forcing us to accept their Religion, right. and right. set their curriculum, the school system. Now you walk around saying I'm Dominican, but your name is Israel. Israel, you know what Israel means? Do you know what Israel means? Israel means what? Father of all children. No, the prince of the power of God. That's, That's right. right. Meaning we're the princes in the power of God on this earth. We're the authority, we're the only people that has the authority from God. We're the only people that got permission from God to rule this earth. Sovereignty. We're the only people that give, that's given that authority. But when we broke God's laws, he took all that away from us. Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Job says, go back into the past. But the white man says, don't remember your past. Forget your past. Slavery was a long time ago. Why do you keep on searching? Why would they tell you not to go to the past? But the people that claim to experience the Holocaust, why do they keep on going to the past? Bring it out. All right. the movies that they portray, all the movies that they create is based upon what? The Holocaust. 1948. Yeah, they tell you, they tell you to forget. They tell you to forget all the people that they killed in the Dominican Republic. They tell you to forget all the people, all the Maroons that they killed. Bring it out. They tell you to forget all everything that happened, the atrocities that happened to blacks and Latinos. Bring it they out. tell you to forget. That's the past. And we walk around saying that I'm Latino, I'm, I'm no Mino Negro, Mino Moreno, but we're all the same people. They divided us, and that's how we're weakened. They came, the conquistadors, they came, they conquered us, they divided us, they gave us different languages, they gave us different flags, they gave us different politics, they gave us different religions, Right. and they destroyed us. And to this day, blacks and Latinos, we don't stand together. But not knowing that we're the strongest together. All right. But going to prophecy, the Bible says he's going to raise up the tabernacles of David. The tabernacles of David is the 12 tribes. Right. Judah, Ashton, Benjamin, Ashton. Levi, all of us were the 12 tribes. Right. Read. For I inquire, excuse, for inquire, I pray thee of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their father. The Bible says prepare yourself. Prepare. You know what it means to prepare? It means to study, sit down. Right. Stop that fast-paced lifestyle that they teach us, and you got to go get it. 
You gotta go get the brain, you gotta get everything. You gotta work 10, 12, 15 hours a day to get that bag and do whatever you gotta do to get it. No, the boss is to prepare yourself. To prepare means to settle down, sit down and think. You need time to think and examine everything for what it is, like Neo did. What did Neo have to do? He had to sit down, sit back, look at everything for what it really is and think. This is a matrix. This whole life that I'm living is a lie. Right. This whole world is a simulation. Right. This whole world was created around keeping the Israelites in darkness. Right. They put guns in the community. They put drugs in the community. It's a kill each other, nigga. I know you hate each other. I right. know what's in your mind already. Wait, come on. I know you're a lustful person. Let me go porn in your community. Let me put strip clubs in the community. Let me give you a woman. Let me let me make it popular to be an Instagram model. Let me put money behind and back you to be an OnlyFans model. So now you don't have to get a college education. You don't have to be a mother. You don't need a man to provide for you. So now we're gonna give your women grants, become entrepreneurs, CEOs, to be business owners. We're gonna give your woman, you know what? The woman don't even have to become a CEO or entrepreneur. You know what, woman? Shake what your mama gave you. You got your walk, your walking money. Look at that ass you have. Look at that tits you have. Look at that mouth you have. You can do all. You're a walking business model. No. So now we create a platform called OnlyFans. Right. Bring it out. You don't have to touch this, man. You, all you got to do is display what you have to advertise. And whoever is the highest bidder, they can bid on you. But Jeez. women, Dang. but money, women in society, we're exploited. We look down as sexual objects, but you objectify yourself. Bring it out. Mm -hmm. Read it again. Read it part. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Read. For we are but of yesterday. You were born, I don't know how old you are, but me, I was born 35 years ago. I don't know how old you are, but someone's born 25. I don't care if you were born 70 years ago. You're but yesterday in comparison to when America set up its empire in this country. Right. right. When the United States set up their empire in 1776, you weren't born. So the time that you came and you injected yourself, the Lord put you back on this earth. That's the time that you were born. You were born into wickedness. Everything, give me, hold that real quick. You were born but yesterday. Give me Psalms 51 verse 5. Everything that you knew that you consumed was taught by your mama. And guess who your mama learned from? Guess who your mama learned from? TV, radio, media. What your mama learned is where the generation is right now. The place that we are as a nation is based upon with the values that your mother instilled in you from the 1960s when they broke up the black family. You know, right. That's what they led us to, Ralph. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Why, why it seems like every generation gets worse and worse? Ah, excellent question. Excellent question. Why does it seem... What did I want before I get to the question? Read it real quick. Psalm chapter 51 question. and verse 5. Uh -huh. hey, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. David said, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Before you came here out the womb, you know they say to play Mozart or classical music to your child? In the womb? Because why? It can shape the child's mind. They said make the child smarter. Right. Because the, this whole life is about vibration. You can't see the energy, you can't see the waves, but the, everything about, they did scientific studies by the frequency that you push out. But for, that's why I know classical music. I'm a, I used to be, I'm a classical musician. I kind of used to be. He's a musician as well. There's certain frequencies that affect your mood. Right. Like for, like for example, in class in America, they tell you to tune your instrument by 440 hertz. But in other European countries, they tell you to tune it by 438 hertz. Because based upon the hertz, the megahertz, the vibration that the sound waves puts out, it can alter a person's mood. In the dark ages, we have forefathers that used to take the in string instruments, certain string instruments, certain vibrations, and they'll if you had a blood clot, they'll pluck the string instrument and it'll release the blood clot because of the vibrations. Now the vibrations that they push out could actually alter your mood, your mind state, your perception, as well as your actions. The music that you listen to, read that again. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. You were shaping in iniquity for the womb. Your mom looking to listen to the drill music. Uh, literally, I don't even listen to music anymore. Name some, uh, I don't know what oh, okay, <laughs> Drake, Little Yachty, um, Little Wayne. I'm about to go back to old school, like 1990. Nas. <laughs> Man, what's some other? Uh, huh? Pop smoke? Okay, what else some other? Come here, come here. Back in my bubble. What's that, Drew? No, what, what? Young, okay, NBA young boy? Okay, sexy, sexy Ray? Sukiyana? Huh? 
yeah. King Bob, Bob, think about it. What music are they, they're pushing death culture, right. Right. whore culture, prostitution culture, drug culture. So read that again. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. You were shaping in iniquity. From the time that you come out your mother, from the time that you're in your mother's womb, the vibrations are being pushed on you. From the time you come out of your mother's womb, the values that your mother is still bringing from you, children are sponges and they soak everything up. So the music that she communi that's communicated to her, she communicates to the child. The way she speak, I said something, you know normal adult, like, as adults, we speak. Sometimes they slip out of our mouth. And my child said the same thing. I told my wife, we gotta be careful the way we speak. Because the child is mimicking and imitating everything about us. Everything about us. I know my, my daughters, like for example, my daughters will come in my room, after I eat, they'll take my plate. Daddy, do you want water? Daddy, want your feet up? You know why? They position themselves after who? The way the mother treats me. So, and the son is gonna treat a woman based upon how? The father treats the mother. Right. Read that again. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. Uh -huh. And in sin did my mother conceive. In sin did my mother conceive me. The energy that you, and a lot of women have trauma. You know trauma passed down to DNA. Mm -hmm. Do your DNA, do your, that's why they told a woman not to be too stressed during pregnancy. Because if you're stressed, if you're too, if you're arguing, that's gonna pass down to your, the trauma's gonna pass down to your child. And iniquity is, was I conceived in sin. You gotta be careful even from the baby being in the womb. That's why you gotta be careful from the husband that you choose. Right. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.